This video is a small section from our Sound Operators training course. The course covers all aspects of sound operation in an audio-video format. Learn more about our training materials in the training section on our website, www.alectrosystems.com. This video is the beginning of the feedback section in our Sound Operators training course. It should help you to understand why feedback occurs in live sound. Now we start part two of the course, feedback. So what is feedback and why do we get it? In terms of symptoms, feedback is that annoying ringing you sometimes hear from the speakers. If it persists, it will get louder and louder until it reaches an all-out squeal. Feedback is caused by constructive interference of sound waves. Here's what happens in layman's terms. The signal from the mixer amplifier enters the speaker, which produces sound in the room. It might simply be a hissing noise if there's no one using the microphone. This sound enters the microphone and is re-amplified by the mixer and amplifier. The amplified sound comes out of the speaker again, but this time it's a little louder. It enters the microphone again, is reamplified and comes through the speaker even louder. Eventually the loop amplification becomes too high and the system starts to oscillate which produces the ringing sound. If the oscillation continues to increase in volume, it turns into the ear piercing squeal. There's a very important term that we're going to be using. It's called gain before feedback. The amplification factor for the system described above is called gain. The term gain before feedback refers to how much amplification or gain can be applied to the system before it reaches the point of oscillation or feedback. This gain before feedback is different for each sound system, each room, and configuration. So before we continue, there's a very important point to remember. The term is called gain before feedback not volume before feedback. And there's a difference. So what's the difference? There's a big difference. Let's assume you have your sound system operating with someone speaking into a microphone. As you increase the input level control on your mixer, you are actually increasing the gain of that channel where the microphone is connected. Because the gain is being increased, the volume level of sound from your speakers is also increasing proportionally. In other words, by increasing the gain of the channel or microphone input, you're increasing the volume of the speaker's voice through the speakers. If you were to turn up the gain beyond its safe limit, it would reach the point of feedback and you would start to hear that ringing sound. Now, let's assume the person stops speaking. This time, as you increase the input control for that microphone channel on the mixer, you are still increasing the gain, just as you did before. The difference is that you're not increasing the volume because there is no volume to start with. The person's not speaking. Why is this important? Because feedback has nothing to do with volume, but it has everything to do with gain. It doesn't matter how loud the person is singing or speaking into the microphone you won't get feedback unless the gain is increased too high. On the other hand, even if no one is speaking into the microphone, you will get feedback if the gain is increased too high. The number of open microphones is important. An open microphone is simply a microphone which is turned on. Gain before feedback refers to the total system gain. This is a combination of all the open microphones together. Let's say, for example, that the sound system in your room, with microphones located in a certain place, is capable of providing a certain amount of gain before feedback. Rather than getting into complicated explanation of how decibels work, let's just call this gain 80% of the total possible gain of the system. In other words, when the system gain goes above 80%, you will start to get feedback. Consider this simple analogy. I think this will make the sound system explanation easier to understand. Consider a bathroom sink. Insert the plug and turn on the tap to halfway or 
The water rises until it reaches the overflow drain, then it starts to drain out of the sink. Now turn up the tap to 70%. The water rises a little higher, but it still continues to drain out the overflow. As we increase to 80%, it rises to the top of the overflow drain, but no higher, it still continues to drain out the overflow. But if we increase it any higher, the overflow drain can't handle the water flow volume, and the water rises over the top of the sink. Likewise, if we had two taps flowing into the sink, one at 40% and the other at 45%, the total would be 85%. Therefore, the water would again go over the top. Now we can apply this analogy to the sound system. If we have one microphone operating at maximum gain before feedback, we are safe, but just barely safe. If we increase its gain above 80%, we will get feedback. We can have two or more open microphones as long as the total gain is not more than the maximum system gain before feedback. Here we show two operating at 40%. We're just barely okay. In the lower figure though, if the total gain exceeds our limit, we will get feedback. Here we have one microphone at 40% and the other at 45. That causes feedback. Learn more about feedback and how to prevent it with our Sound Operators training course. See the training section of our website, www.electrosystems.com.